Thank you, Brother Pastor. And now prepare to hear from the most knowledgeable man on the planet yes, regarding the Just Third Way, the Capital Homestead Act, and other issues that need to be discussed today. Norman Curlin, Dr. Norman Curlin, is a lawyer economist, pioneer of employee stock ownership plans, and a leading global advocate for the just third way. Dr. Curlin serves as president of the All-Volunteer Center for Economic and Social Justice, and he heads Equity Expansion International, Inc., an investment banking firm for the have-nots. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. He is a co-founder of the American Revolutionary Party. President Reagan, in 1985, appointed him as the deputy chairman of the Bipartisan Presidential Task Force on Project Economic Justice before serving as Washington Consul for ESOP inventor Louis Kelso. Curlin was director of planning of the Citizens' Crusade against poverty, headed by labor statesman Walter Ruther. Before that, as a federal lawyer, he was deeply involved in the Mississippi One Person, One Vote movement and in President Johnson's War on Poverty. Norm Curlin received his Doctor of Laws degree from the University of Chicago, where he studied law and economics. Please welcome our leader, Dr. Norman Curlin. Again, Walter, Bob, Ahmed, a hard ax to follow. My topic is closing the wealth gap through getting money power to the people. I want to assure Americans that we are not here to shut down the Fed in any way. Our objective, our goal, is to transform the Fed from being used as a model for creating money that widens the ownership and economic power gap. The Federal Reserve recently abandoned its traditional role of creating money for federal debts and for commercial banks and move toward the creation of cheap credit for greedy lenders and rich Wall Street CEOs. Our objective is to stop using money for creating more monopolies. Monopolies are where power is concentrated. Money was not created by God. Money is a social tool created by human beings to be able to enable them to produce and to consume. And as we move from primitive barter economies where goods were traded for other goods, we created a new kind of money, and that is called fiat money. It's created out of thin air. Central banks were invented to provide credit so that an economy, the private sector, could expand by adding new plants and equipment, new rentable space, uh, new infrastructure. All of this if we had known of what Lewis Kelso had written about back in 1958, would have been done in ways in which all Americans would be economically independent. They would have all accumulated assets. Now, why is that important? It's important because human nature has not changed. Human beings are what they were tens of thousands of years ago. You might educate and train people, but human beings, that's only, you can only 
increase their productiveness by, uh, to a certain degree, but essentially we're no smarter than our ancestors were. What has changed in the last couple hundred years since the Industrial Revolution began? What has changed is that we have been inventors of technology, taking from the land the resources and fashioning them into new and more effective technologies. From something that appeared in the Washington Post on the 13th of April by Ray Kurzweil, who is a computer scientist and inventor, and he's the author of Age of the Spiritual Machines. And the subtitle is, When Computers Exceed Human Intelligence. What he pointed out was that when he first entered MIT in 1965, they had a computer that was available for all the students and all the faculty. It cost about $11 million. He says today, the cell phone, the cell phone computer is one million times smaller, one million times less expensive, and 1,000 times more powerful. That amounts to a billion times more computer power per dollar. Uh, in, in those 40 years. But then he pointed out, this is what's changing in the world, information technology and the ability to create robots and, and what Buckminster Fuller called energy slaves. He said over the next 25 years, at the same cost, we will have an additional billion times more powerful information technology. He predicts he predicts that this will solve the global warming problems. This will lead to longer lives. It will lead to solving other problems. We are here to talk about and build the, the basis, the foundation for the culture of life. life.